Hello everyone and welcome back to Victoria 2, the Divergences of Darkness mod. So, I believe the last time we played we had a war in India that we had won. Um, I don't know what it was or what the war was about because that was a while ago. I think we took out this country, Sid, Sid, Sind. And uh, the people aren't too happy about it, but it's okay, because I don't care. And uh, we have a fairly large army. We also colonized um, Zhao Rao, or Zhao, also known as Australia. And uh, yeah, so let's get back into it. So it's been a while. I think Bengal was at war with the Mughals, and now it's a mess. It's a mess. Uh, the Chinese are now involved. Um, I don't know. But I think the Shun. Yeah, the Shun are involved. They're at war with Burma. It's crazy. It's just insanity right now. Uh, they're at war with Punjab. Punjab. They're, it, it's crazy. They're just they're at war with everybody. Everyone's at war with everyone. So, let's see. I don't have any war justifications. I'm also losing money. Why? Raise tariffs. Make them 37%. Bring in some money. Also, I can raise taxes on the wealthy. On the middle class and on the poor. And I can lower tariffs. There we go. Because tariffs hurt the middle class because the middle class merchants. Uh, I don't think there are. Yeah. Because of the, the artisans and the clerics the clerks so that hurts the middle class so we have 36,000 soldiers in why does it say garnison Tajikistan I don't care sorry Tajikistan yeah I don't care um let's see uh let's the army India we are pleased uh, decline I don't care Chaga Taikane don't care they're they're so far out of the way for me it's not worth to Jackie Stan no I don't I don't care I don't, sorry. I don't. I'm not gonna get embroiled in that crisis See, no one cared Maybe um, if Muscovoy, like, turned into Russia, if they, like, went with, sure, if they, like, unified with Novgorod and became, like, Russia, and th then maybe I'd be interested. I could get penal colonies. Consciousness and non-colonial. I'll lose 0.5 militancy. So, if I'm going to take Baroda, Baroda is probably next, because then I'm starting to get into the Indian heartland. And then Punjab. It looks like Punjab fought him into a stalemate. The Mughals aren't in any hurry for a war. So how much would it be to conquer all of Punjab? Demand a concession. 7.5. 7, 8, 9, 10, that would be 20, 20.6 20 would be 21. I think my limit's 25, yeah. So I'll let it go down a little bit. And then what region of Punjab do I want? I could take Punjab, Punjab. I could take Amistar, or I could take Kashmir. Or I could take Punjabi Kabul. I could take over Afghanistan as well. Hmm. I wonder if that would be a mistake or not. To invade Afghanistan. Now I'm making a lot of money. I'll lower taxes some more. That's fine. Tariffs are probably... I'll bring them down to 30%. That's probably fine. Tariffs. 
See, I would jack up taxes and shit to make tons of money, but then your populace gets really, really angry and there's really no point. Incorporating a new factory, colonial exploitation, or local militancy. Where? Yongulu. Whatever. I don't even know where Yongulu is. Sounds like it's over here somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't know. So I think I get nationalism and imperialism, right? 1860. If you don't know who that is, it's Cecil Rhodes. And uh, do we actually get... But yeah, I watched a, a documentary on um, Victorian um, Europe, uh, the British Empire. But like one dude, like like Cecil Rhodes, the one dude he became he was a uh, a mining uh, dude. He I believe he owned like all the diamonds in South Africa type deal. But like he expanded. Him alone expanded the empire, like to con like British Empire, to conquering like most of this land, and then like to build a telegraph line from Egypt, from Cairo to, to uh, Cape Town, Cape Town to Cairo, and then a railroad from Cape Town to Cairo. It's crazy. It's crazy. It was just a really interesting story. How like one dude shaped um, uh, British politics in Africa very interesting so I suppose we just pop it Egypt now point seven point oh I'll take it and we'll invade them with you know like 80,000 soldiers or whatever I have there stationed in Egypt the fleet of the English crown don't I have more fleets I have the second fleet I have, oh, I have two right here. I have the seventh, I have the fourth fleet, which is a transport fleet. I have the Egyptian Expeditionary Navy, which has all been brutally beaten up. And then I, don't I have a fleet here somewhere? I do. There it is. I have two fleets here. Okay, one of them is just a transport fleet. And do I have a fleet over here in Asia? No, I'll have to make a squadron. I got troops all over the world, man. It's crazy. There's 6,000 men here. Can I get the army of Sierra Leone? I can get more soldiers, so. What can I build? I can build some Mande infantry, African miner, and then I can build some Angolese. We'll build Angolese. Cavalry, crew infantry. Uh, I'll build an Angolese regular. There we go. Spain, new ideology in Spain. State and government, beautiful. I think uh, we get of state and government. Yes, of state and government, our state is changing, evolving from a simple government. I would read the rest of that, but these pop-ups <laughs> jumped into my face. Okay, populism, yeah, whatever. Uh, simple go government bureaucrats and despots to a true organism of the state. We march into a modern era. Uh, one where new ideas will transform the way we live. Truly. So we need to do more Navy stuff. We'll do uh, orderly elections. Opposed to the disorderly elections that we've had. Uh, inconvenient preacher. Problems from the pulpit. A pacifist preacher. He can't preach from the grave. Violence isn't the answer. Even though I'm about to go to war in Egypt. It doesn't matter because I've never... Of the voting system in Victoria too. I've never had like a like a swing in party politics to the point where it's like the conservatives are in power and then all of a sudden like the socialists take over. O only if I'm like progressively trying to get the socialists to take over will it happen. Like if I answer like all these things like straight like socialists, then it'll change. But I've never had it pr change from like. The upper house is conservative to like the it turns liberal like in an election i've never had that 
usually it's like a gradual change. It doesn't change overnight though. So, I mean, you could literally click on anything and it wouldn't matter. Uh, limited, see, look. Limited citizenship. Reformists want full citizenship. All men are created equal. It's true. All men are created equal. Julian Foch. Uh, you know what? I think... I think conservative parties are pro-militancy. So if we want, we can get the reformists into power. And then the, they're pro-militancy. Uh, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to back the liberals. Because uh, I just want a change in government. We'll get a, uh, a loyal... Or We'll dump the Loyalist Party for the time being until, you know, and we'll get a, a Liberal Party in power. I mean, because this is the age of liberalism. Let's be real here. That age has just died. And, uh, you know, we'll, we're, we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. So capitalism. I don't think my guys are too capitalist. I think they are straight up interventious. Yes, they are interventionism, which is the government intervenes. Uh, when there's a problem. So yeah, I went to New York uh, last weekend. Well, well, by the time, I don't know when you guys are watching this, but I went to New York the weekend before this, and, um, oh good, tax reform. And uh, we went to this, uh, like, healthy food expo. I don't even remember what the hell it was called. But we went to, like, this health expo or, or something. I don't know. It was in the, it was in the expo center in in the financial district in New York City. And I went there and I was like, eh, this is kinda, kinda dumb, but whatever, some of the stuff's kinda cool. Free trade, are we, what are we? Interventionism. Interventionism. Free trade or protectionism, let's do that. But yeah, we went to the Health Food Expo and it was like non like meat products and like very like healthy stuff like healthy ice cream that's made from soy milk and stuff like that but it was fun it, uh, the food was was decent it was actually some of it was actually really good uh they, they had these like these little popcorns i don't even know like they come from like a baby corn or something and like the little popcorns have like they don't have the husks that get like stuck in your teeth they're kind of awesome I don't need anyone's help on this one. But uh, we got some of that. There are also some, like, really good, like, cookies and shit like that that were, like, quote-unquote healthy. Or, like, good for you. Like, they didn't have, like, gluten and shit like that. But we went to this, this like, vegetarian Chinese restaurant. And none of the stuff had meat in it, but it was so good. They made, like, they had these pork dumplings or pork buns. They were amazing. And it was just, it was all vegetarian. So it was very interesting. So uh, I'll probably go to New York. Uh, probably every chance I get. Because New York, New York is always fun. You know, how, how can you not like the city? There's tons of, tons of stuff to do. There's always something to do in the city. But yeah, we went to like Chinatown. New York Chinatown. And we went and saw the angry dumpling lady. And all that good stuff. So we had a, I had a lot of fun. So, if you guys are going to New York, Chinatown's where it at. If you're, like, a geek or a nerd and you like seeing, like, like if you want to go overseas and, like, see the, you know, China and stuff, I do condone going to Chinatown because, you know, they're, the people are, like, right off the boat. They've lived there for generations. They don't have to speak English, that type of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. So that and you can find some really good stuff there you can find some really cool stuff in Chinatown you can find all sorts of crazy shit in Chinatown but uh, next time I'm going I think I'm gonna buy a samurai sword I mean I already have one uh, my brother bought for me it was like $30 or something that was a Chinese sword Chi or samurai sword although it is made in China 
But uh, yeah. So there's oh there's always cool stuff there to find there. But if you guys like anime or any of that stuff, and you like like the figurines, like I have a I have a few. Few I have a bunch. Well, I wouldn't consider it a bunch. I have like twelve. I think. Maybe I have a little bit more. But, uh, like the figurines you collect, like I have One Piece ones that I have. I think that's it. I don't have any. I have some Assassin's Creed ones, but I have One Piece ones. And, uh, that's a perfect place to get them. And they're not, like, ridiculously expensive. Like, you go on eBay or, or you go to J-List and they're, like, $50 for them. But if you just, like, take your time in Chinatown and, like, look for them and like make sure they're like decent like they don't have like eyes that are pointing different directions or whatever then uh then you generally you'll you'll find some pretty decent ones so i'll probably go again if and when i get the chance to go and uh check out and see if we got uh if they have any because i'd like to get some more especially if they're like, like 10 bucks 20 bucks that's a steal considering when you get them shipped in from japan it's like ten dollars for shipping or something like i can't remember what the shipping is from japan it's been for been a while since i got anything from japan and by a while i mean like like uh, i don't know a while i think it uh since february it's been a couple months I was like, I was, was on a craze where I was like buying them, like, oh, I need to have them. But like, you know, now it's nice if I get like one piece figurines and stuff, because then I can like display them on my, uh, my shelf with all the, uh, the animes. So that's cool. Also, uh, I believe if you're not like a one piece or not a one piece but if you're not like a nerd like anime waifu person then just tune this out and just watch the game but uh i've been reading what did i start i started reading berserk and berserk's it's an old manga uh because we finished up we didn't finish one punch man but they're like rewriting one punch man from an internet comic to a manga like an official manga so you know, it takes, like, four months or something for them to transfer, like, the internet comic to, like, a manga. So I was like, alright, I'll start, I was like, uh, I'll, I'll read some Berserk, because I've heard that people like Berserk. I've heard that, like, like, a lot of people like it, like, even though it's old, and it's still going, people like it. Like, they're like, yeah, Berserk is, like, cool, like, the dude's got a giant sword. But, so I started reading it, and that's exactly it. The dude's just got, like, a giant, like, the dude's, like, six foot tall or whatever, and he has, like, a six foot giant sword. The sword's, like, three feet or, like, two feet wide or something ridiculous. And he just kills everyone. He just kills everything, like, all the monsters that come at him. He just kills them, like, he gets attacked by soldiers on horses. He just cuts the soldiers in half along with the horse, so, like, it's nothing. So I was watching that, and if you guys are, like, if you're new to like manga i wouldn't suggest reading that uh if you're new to manga i would definitely suggest reading one punch man because that has all the ridiculousness of of a manga with you know some of the more serious tones of a manga because if you don't know what one punch man is uh one punch man is just the dude's uh dude's a superhero but like he just got super strong to the point where nothing can hurt him and he finishes every battle in one punch so like he'll like a, a monster will come up and there'll be like a giant monster or whatever and he punches it once and it just explodes into a thousand pieces and he just he gets bored fighting monsters because the battle always ends in one fight it, he's kind of saddened that uh, it's not like a longer battle and uh, that's just what he does he's just like he's always nonchalant really doesn't care about anything like like uh the other superheroes will be freaking out they're like oh this giant monster is destroying and then he'll just be like yeah it's a monster and then he'll he'll just like punch it once and it'll explode into a thousand pieces or whatever and that's it like he, he won't care he shows little no emotion he's just like oh that was fun I'm like oh my job's done i'm gonna go home and like play video games and that's what he does that's the entire the entire series so 
that would be one if you like if you wanted to like start reading like you're like oh, i don't know i was pretty nerdy if you if you want to read it if you want to start that's that's one i would start with one punch man definitely a lot of fun fun read uh i read it with my my friends on uh, manga night so yeah that one's a lot of fun so i do suggest that would be like the first one if you want to start reading like one that's like funny and like stupid and it's not super serious like that's one to read that would, that would be my choice it's probably my second favorite after one piece because yeah, i don't read i don't read like naruto or bleach or any of that i, I hopped off that bandwagon a long time ago but but one piece there's just something about one piece that i like so much i don't know what it is but yeah you can find all that stuff it's great it's good stuff like if if you're bored manga's where it's at especially if you're like tired of the comic book superhero shit i'm so tired of like oh the avengers marvel i mean yeah they're cool and like the iron man movies were good and like some of the other like movies were good but i'm just so tired of marvel comic book movies i'm so tired of them And it's not that they're bad, but they're all really good movies. It's just I'm not I've never been a big comic book dude. I mean, if I had to choose a superhero, Batman. Just because he's cool. I mean, that's probably the one superhero movie I want to see. Like I know the Avengers Age of Ultron or something comes out soon. Like uh well, I say soon, I mean like this weekend or something. But like I I don't I don't care. The Avengers has never been my thing. But I, I'll probably see the new Superman v. Batman. But even that's, like, low on my list of movies to see. If I had to, like, choose the movie that I'm going to see this year that I'm excited for, definitely Star Wars, because it comes out near Christmas. Like, a couple days before Christmas. So that's the game. That's the movie that I want to see. Star Wars. See if it's any good. Probably will be. I hope it's good. It'd be, I'd be really disappointed if I, like, went and saw it and, like, man, that movie was shit. I'd be kind of pissed. Man, people don't like this war at home. The war at home, people don't like it. You want to just want to surrender? I mean, I've already taken control of your nation, so, I mean... Yeah. Alright. Sorry about that. Alright. So, uh, the Zan Dynasty. I think... Where is the Zan Dynasty? They're an Asian dynasty. I know that, I think. They're here somewhere. I don't know where. But, yeah. Yeah, so. Movie I'm excited for. Star Wars. Star Wars all day. All day day oh uh, yeah i'm a way big sci-fi person over like futuristic stuff but yeah oh and if you don't want to if you are like yeah manga stupid and i don't want to read manga uh one punch man is getting an anime so if you watch like anime like you can't stand the books but you want to watch like you can watch it the anime is coming out soon i don't when I say soon, I don't know how soon, but by the end of the year, it will be out. So, keep an eye out for that, because that'll be fun. That'll be good. It'll be some good stuff. So, let's, I mean, we're not really doing anything. That's why I'm kind of just rambling. We're just taking over Egypt. The Ajuran Sultanate these guys i should probably take them out too man just control the entire port the horn of africa then n nothing goes down it's controlled by the uh the dual monarchy look at the kurds man they cut a clear path to the south that's what they should do for real <laughs> look at iraq iraq is so fucked half of it's in persia the other half's here it, it, it won't be a country very soon. You know what will happen? The Safarids or the Qajar. Or the, oh, they're the Zand. 
the Zan Dynasty, they'll gang up and take back Persian holdings. And then, like, the Turks will come back and just conquer Iraq and Kurdistan. Or the Arabs will conquer them. You know, something like that will happen. Or I'll conquer them. You know, it's whatever. So let's go to Ashwan. Take take them out. I'm losing a lot of soldiers. So let's let's march these guys back to the Suez. Let's go. We'll have them here. We'll have them go along the Nile. So I have one focus point. Where are the rest of my focus points? Oh. Bring bureaucrats, I assume. To the Maldives and shit. So I'm going to do bureaucrats. Or not bureaucrats. Let's do... We'll encourage... What should I encourage in Normandy? What is this? Commercial focus? Pharmaceutical industry. Tobacco industry. Can build railroads. I already have railroads, don't I? Like, like I don't. I already have a lot of railroads. I don't have any connecting whales. You know what? I'm gonna have. I'm going to encourage farmers in Ireland. Sure. There we go. Puppeted. The Anglo... Anglo-French Egypt. The first German council in Madrid. Hold on. Let's read this because this is significant. All right. So the first... Oops. Sorry. The first... German council in Br in Madrid, the struggle between Burgundy and Bohemia for dominance over the remains of the Holy Roman Empire and the German nation still rages on. But now in the year of 15 or 1853, sorry, German and German Germanins, Germans are finally rising to face their oppressors. Repres representatives of all German principalities are meeting in Madrid to hold a council challenging the status quo. Furthermore, they are demonstrated uh, demonstrating the the popular demise for the increased political and social freedom, democracy, and national unity within liberal principles. Okay. Cool. German statehood, I'm all for it. Because uh, once the Germans have, like, statehood, statehood, uh, I'll obviously support them. Especially over the powers of Burgundy, who is my rival, and Bohemia, who is yet to do anything good for me. Have them go to the Suez. This army will go to Dumiet. This fleet will go to Alexandria because now I own them, basically. Of course, they'll accept they're my puppet state. Sure. So now I actually have a state, the Anglo-French West Indies. And we outlawed slavery, I believe. So no slavery in our empire. You beautiful. So we're actually able to make way more soldiers now. Whoa, whoa, crazy camera. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to build another army because I don't trust that the Burgundians will not declare war on me because the Burgundians are not to be trusted. So we'll get some French infantry and uh, some French light cav. We'll get some Breton soldiers. Okay. Spain, the second German council in Madrid following the aspirations of the first German council representatives of the free German states are meeting in Madrid to decide on what course to take. Rumors has it that they are on verge of offering the crown of a German empire to a dynasty of the Germ leading German state. Okay. So, basically, that means is Germany will form soon. Or not Germany. The Danubian Confederation will form soon. Which is good for me... Because I have no influence in Germany. And once they unify, I can easily influence a German state. I think these guys need state government, don't they? Because I have a state government. Wait, 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 what? Uh, what do I need? Italy, any core province owner or culture is not Italian, either not a great power or at peace. Are they not at peace? Or is there like a war in Italy right now? What's what? What? I don't. 
Okay, I'm just going, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get influence in all these little Italian countries. Because Burgundy kind of holds sway over them right now. And uh, I'm basically... Oh, Venice is a great power. That's the problem. Venice is a great power. We cannot form Italy while well, Venice is a great power. If they were not a great power, I bet they would probably relent. Ooh. Has it happened? It has happened. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. We need to ally with these guys. They will immediately accept. So, what has happened is after the second German confederate, or the second German council, they basically go, the Germans basically go and give the crown of Germany to, it looks like they give it to the Austrians this time. And basically what happens then is the Austrians become the leaders of this confederation. And other German countries that are like like-minded, that are free, such as uh, Wurttemberg, it looks like Bavaria, Sweden, or no, Switzerland, sorry, um, have allied together and formed a confederation. And basically now they are fighting... Um, they're fighting Bohemia, it looks like, and Burgundy for control of influence. And what is going to happen, usually, is that they're fighting two wars, and Bohemia and Burgundy will cut the confederation down the size. They'll cut the German confederation down the size. They're actually a fourth great power, technically, by industry. So they'd, be, they'd boot Sweden out. Even though Sweden has a larger army. Or Scandinavia. They'd actually boot them up. Ooh, the Blight of 1854. Uh, yeah, I'll help, help them. Help them good. Well, let's see. If they become a great power, if they become number four, the boots everyone back and Venice won't become, won't be a great power. I think Venice just passed Hungary. Yes, I did. Hungary just passed Venice now, so they're like one point within each other. So, let's see, who was I? Okay, them. Etria, Etrura. Which is Tuscany. The Papal States. I'm gonna try and wrangle them from Aragon's sphere of influence. It's, uh, Genoa. I think I got them all. There might be a little one, little ones like Parma. And basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to construct Italy. You basically take all of them, all these little principalities, and form them into one nation. Sure, Bengal, I'll ally with you for the time being. And we'll do Parara. Because then what will happen is. When I form Italy, Italy will immediately ally to me, putting pressure on Aragon as a Mediterranean power. The hell? I'll base 12,000 men in Cairo. Actually. Good, they all healed. So this will be the army of Africa. Oop, wrong. A R M E D. Africa. And this will be the Suez. This will be the army of Egypt. G Y P T. So. On to other news. Uh, last weekend, last Sunday, I want to say, last Sunday, we played D and D, and I was a uh, dungeon master, and it went very successfully. So, I think it's all been decided that I am now dungeon master for our D and D sessions. 
I know, when you guys thought this couldn't get any nerdier, playing a historical video game talking about anime and manga. Oh, I'm taking it there. But yes, we uh, we played D&D. I am the Dungeon Master for next Sunday, I want to say. This coming Sunday. I have a, uh, I have a, a quest all lined up for the guys, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what the hell happens. Uh, but last week's quest, they all lived. So, you know, that's good, I suppose, <laughs> that they lived. They made it through. Uh, I only ran a test uh, version, so everything was scaled down. There was only two people playing, and everything was scaled down. But they lived. So this weekend, I think we're having all four people play. Maybe five? Maybe five. I don't know. But uh, if so, then they're, they're going to feel the... Uh, yeah, they're they're gonna be in there. There are points where they're gonna be in some trouble, so that'll be fun. I'm excited. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So can't wait for that. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, la last week's session they were they. I just had them clear out like a farmhouse, and uh, they were attacked by some giant bats that were like four foot tall and had like ten foot wingspans or something like that. They were like crazy tall bats, and they they fought them and they won. So that was cool. That was cool. We had we had a lot of fun. Wow, they fought Bohemia to a standstill. No way. That's the first time I've ever seen them fight Bohemia to a stand standstill. Cool. We got a Casas Belly on these guys. And the only reason I say that, do we not? We got it on these guys? Who did we get that Casas Belly on? Uh, maybe I can, like, do, do something. I don't know. But these guys are like, um, the Duchy of the Cape, Batavia. If I try and puppet these guys, how new Newell Antwerpen? These guys are actually Dutch. They're Boer. Yes, these guys are the Dutch. So if I puppet them, I wonder. I wonder if I could puppet them all, and like have this loose confederation. Or, or, here, this is what I'm thinking. Because I want to gain a foothold in South Africa, right? So, what I'm thinking is, we declare war on the Zosa, the Zohosa, and then we go and take out Lesotho, and then we take Lewin, and then it gives us a strong base in the tip of Africa, along with Burgundy. And uh, we'll basically declare war on Newfoundlander and Transkop and, uh, and Greekland. And I think that's it. I think those are the only Boer states. We basically declare war on them and unite them all under our one banner. And then, let's see. Then I think I get like a Create South Africa thing. I get like the Duchy of the Cape. Yeah, I think they have. Do they have? Yeah, see, these guys have the Duchy of the Cape. And uh, basically, you can, like, form all of this into one country. You can, like, create South Africa, which I'm, I'm thinking about doing because I kind of want to do the, uh, you know, from Cape Town. I, I don't even know if it's called Cape Town. No. Yeah, Province to Cap. The, the Cape Province to Cairo. And have like a train, a railroad that runs all the way through down to the bottom. I think I want to do that. So at this point, it's like squeezing Burgundy's tip, their hold on the cape. And that's what I want to do. That seems like the most efficient way of doing it. I still want to take India too. So there's like, there's a lot of, uh, ways here that I can expand. I could probably take Baroda. 
13. If I justify a war, establish a protector at 15. That'd be too much. So I gotta wait. I gotta wait until that goes down. So I think I'm gonna end this part here for now. Sure, whatever. War with Arabia. But I think I'm gonna end this part here for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for listening to my rambling. But if you guys enjoyed this play video, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot to me. I appreciate it quite a bit. I think we're up to 350 five subscribers or something ridiculous you guys are crazy i don't know why you keep watching my shit but you do so i thank you very much but yeah i'll talk to you guys later and until next time stay tuned